So far, we have just been laying the grid out on the map. Now we're ready to calculate the value for each grid cell and populate the grid. For this, we use a geostatistical mapping technique called Kriging. I know that will frighten some of you, but just bear with me until you see how easy we've made it. Select the Run Gridding option. These are the geostatistic parameters that need to be set. For now, we'll just accept the default values and go ahead and calculate the values in the run. We'll come back and define what we are doing in a few moments. Now our apprentice is populating our grid. Notice that all of our data is within the fault block. When we're finished, we'll see that apprentice honors the faults and will not calculate across them. Since there are no values on the outside of the faults, apprentice will use null values in these regions. If there were values outside of the faults, apprentice would use the values on the two sides independent of each other. When apprentice finishes calculating the grid, it will contour it. These contours are not the same as those we digitized in. This is a rather fine distinction, but a very important one. When creaking is finished, we can click on cells to see the values. Notice that if we click on cells outside of the fault block area, we get null values. Remember we commented earlier that Apprentice will not contour across a fault, and since we have no data outside of the fault block, no values are put in these cells. We may want to see or view the entire grid calculated. Let's change the draw style to color fills to see a different representation of the data. How good of a job did Apprentice do in creating a grid that represents the original data? Well, if you remember what the original data looked like, you can compare it mentally. Here's a way to check this, however. First, we turn off the grid lines so that we can see the contour lines a little better. Next, we will set the contour interval for the grid data to match the contours digitized in. This is so we can compare the two. Then we will plot the grid data and the original contour intervals simultaneously. Here we see the grid data plotted with color fill and the original digitized contours plotted as white lines. You can see where the fit is good and where it's not graphically. Notice that while some of the contour lines match the grid lines very well, some do not. In this area, the problem may be that we do not have a fine enough grid, or we may need additional control points in this area. When you see graphically that you have trouble, it's not too difficult to come up with a correction. We'll save this grid and calculate the grid for the other maps. When we switch to the gross thickness map, we see that we did not have contours for this map. The grid is already set up, so all we have to do is calculate the grid values based on the data available, which in this case is just well data. Remember that we can only have one grid for a set of maps. It would not make sense to have a different grid for the structure map than we have for the net thickness map and then try to do calculations between the two.